Hi there, my name is Karen O'Connor of SingWise.com and a lot of you have been asking me about the specific muscles that we need to engage in order to support our tones effectively. And I promise that I'm gonna answer that question in a moment, but first I want you to understand a couple things. The first of which is that singers intuitively employ a variety of strategies when it comes to supporting their singing tones. And while I wouldn't necessarily say that they're all equally advantageous in all singing situations, I also wouldn't necessarily say that they're all wrong either. So today I'm going to outline just one of many possible ways in which we can support our singing tones. And I know that makes me sound a little non-committal. And the second thing that I want you to understand is that our bodies are all just a little bit different in terms of their tonicity and our carriage, our posture, our alignment. And those individual anatomical differences can determine to some extent the support strategy that we just sort of intuitively call upon when we're singing. For example, I have a compromised abdominal wall and I know that that has an impact on my singing and the coordination that I use to support my singing tone. All right, so now that we've cleared that up a little bit, I want to introduce you to a concept that I call supporting in a V configuration. Now I know it sounds a little bit strange, so just bear with me for a moment, please. So I don't know if you were taught this or maybe it was just my OCD mother who was very insistent upon this, but when you're squeezing the tube of toothpaste, you never squeeze from the middle. You always squeeze from the bottom. You roll that tube of toothpaste up from the bottom and that's basically what we're doing here. We're starting here by engaging these muscles right above the pubic bone and as we start to compress the air and generate our tone and as we get along in the vocal exercise or vocal phrase, we're basically going to feel that contraction, that tube of toothpaste, so to speak, being rolled up in this sort of V-shaped pattern. It's going to start from this little point right above the pubic bone and it's going to wrap over the hip bones and into these transverse and oblique muscles. So whether you realize it or not, there is a very good chance that that's actually the coordination that you employ when supporting your singing tone. When I ask my students to become very kinesthetically aware of their own support strategy and where they're feeling that sense of lower body engagement, that leaning on sensation, they typically report feeling something very, very similar to this, where they feel as though they get a little bit of a tuck in here, it starts here, and the contraction starts to sort of move up here into this transverse oblique area. And the reason why they experience that coordination and that sensation as they do when they're supporting their singing tones is because I ask them to maintain a bit of lateral expansion throughout the first part of their vocal phrases or exercises. So basically, in order to maintain that lateral expansion, we have to keep those ribs open a little bit. We don't want to force it, just a little bit is fine. And so in order to do that, they have to keep those inspiratory external intercostal muscles simultaneously engaged with the expiratory muscles that are helping to generate that subglottal pressure. So these intercostal muscles are between the ribs in those costal spaces and they run at diagonals and they have their origin at the spine and their job is to lift the ribs up and back as we inhale. So when we're engaging those muscles in order to keep that rib cage open just a little bit, they're going to act as antagonist pairs to these expiratory muscles, in particular these transverse and oblique muscles. They're going to be engaged in a little bit of a tug of war, a good tug of war. It's this sort of dynamic opposition, right? The degree to which we engage those is going to differ depending on the dynamics depending on how long we're singing that vocal phrase or sustaining that tone, and depending on the pitch, the phonation frequency. Now, if we're engaging all of the muscles of our torsos as we're supporting our tones, as we should be, especially for intense singing, we're also going to feel engagement here of these expiratory muscles down here and their antagonist pairs in this lumbar region are going to be activated, they're going to become engaged as well in a little bit of this tug of war. So let's go back to an exercise which I think I introduced you to in that last video, and that's that 
hiss, buzz, o, oh, buzz, hiss, S-Z-O-Z-S exercise. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go through that exercise. I'm going to pay really, really close attention to where we're feeling that sense of lower body engagement. And again, we're going to try to maintain a little bit of this inspiratory posture through here, this lateral expansion. And hopefully you'll start to notice that that sensation does kind of sort of start down here and move upward in this sort of V-shaped pattern. You're rolling the tube of toothpaste again up from the bottom. All right, so let's do this hiss, buzz, oh, buzz, hiss. And as I got further along in that exercise, I started to feel more and more engagement here of these transverse and oblique muscles. And I allowed my ribcage to stay open, but near the end there, it started to kind of want to come in. And that's perfectly normal. Those ribs do have to come in at some point so that we can allow the diaphragm to continue to ascend in preparation for the next breath. And if you are someone like me who has a compromised abdominal wall, or you're somebody who tends to over protrude or distend your abdomen, especially forward and then getting a little bit of a sway back, it's always a good idea to start with a little bit of a tuck of those muscles immediately above the pubic bone before you inhale. And that will prevent your belly from protruding too far forward and getting your posture kind of out of whack and getting those support muscles sort of imbalanced. Now you may or may not have noticed, but up until this point, I have not mentioned the abdominus rectus muscle. That's a long muscle that runs right along the front here. And there's a reason why I don't generally encourage an active engagement of that muscle. And that's because when we engage that muscle, we tend to do so forcefully and thrust the abdominal wall in, which can generate too high a subglottal pressure for our vocal folds to handle, and it can lead to a locking of the solar plexus. Now, in truth, we can't completely isolate the actions and the contraction efforts of the muscles in the, the torso, but we can exert some conscious control over the coordination and the degree to which those muscles become engaged. And part of that, again, is if we maintain a bit of a lateral expansion, then these muscles are also going to help mitigate those subglottal pressures. They're going to help to keep that abdominus rectus muscle in check even when it becomes engaged. And you'll probably find that it becomes increasingly engaged in the supporting of our tone as we move along further into the vocal phrase or sustained tone. But don't try to force that muscle in because that's just going to force the diaphragm up and the subglottal pressure is just going to be too high and again you risk locking that solar plexus region. All right, give this a try and let me know how you do with it. Let me know if you also experience your sensations of support, that leaning on in this sort of V-shaped pattern when you maintain a bit of a lateral expansion throughout the first part of your vocal phrases. In the meantime, please like this video, subscribe to this channel so that when I post my next video, you will be one of the first to be notified. And also, please share this video with any of your singing friends if you feel like it might be something that they could really learn from. Thank you so much for watching today. V, v. The letter V. V, V, the letter V. The letter V.